Welcome to another video. We have a limit problem here that requires nothing special. All you have to do is do what you would do to any other limit problem. However, if you use the wrong strategy for this, things are going to get very complicated for you and it gets frustrating. But if you use the right strategy, it shouldn't take you long. Now, Remember that every time you get a limit problem, the first thing you do is plug it in, okay? Just plug it in unless any term or any part of the function you have is not continuous at the target point. But by the rule of continuity, we know that x is a polynomial and it's continuous at zero. This is a trig function continuous at zero. This is also continuous at zero. So you have the right to plug in anything that you see here. So Let's plug it in. If we plug it in, you can observe just by watching. This is going to be 0 times 0 is 0. This is 0 sine 0 is 0. So it's going to be 0 over 0. It's an indeterminate form which we cannot do anything with. So we have to do some algebraic manipulation or apply L'Hopital's rule. That's where the problem is. You have to decide which one you're going to apply and when because we're going to need both. Let's get into the video. Just like I explained at the beginning, we just need to do a plug-in and we know obviously from that original explanation that we're going to get zero on top and we're going to get zero under. Well, this looks like a percentage, but I mean zero over zero. That's terrible writing. Okay. but. What we mean is every time we have zero over zero, L'Hopital's rule is our best friend. Now, my question is, should you use L'Hopital's rule now or should you use trigonometric manipulation? My recommendation is L'Hopital's rule first. Why? Because there's an x here. If there was no x, no polynomial, if all you had was just tan x over sin x, definitely L'Hopital's rule would work or even, I mean, algebraic manipulation will be your first choice, and then you can go ahead and do L'Hopital's rule. But L'Hopital's rule helps you get rid of this because it will become a constant rather than you have a variable. So that's what you do first. So, so now we apply L'Hopital's rule. We have the limit as x goes to zero of the derivative of the top divided by the derivative of the bottom. So we're gonna have one minus the derivative of tan x is secant squared x and this is going to be 1 minus the derivative of sine x is cosine x. Okay, so we've applied L'Hopital's rule and see what we have. Now we have, oh, this is repeated. You have the same experience. So I'm going to write this properly this time, 0 over 0. Okay, that's the indeterminate form that we have. But this does not help us. So the next question is, should you use L'Hopital's rule again? This is the good thing about L'Hopital's rule. If you use L'Hopital's rule one more time, you're going to get zero here, but you have to take the derivative of secant squared. Now this derivative involves a chain. You're going to use the chain rule to take this derivative. I don't know if that's what you want to do. Some people like that. And you take this derivative, you're gonna have, um, you're still gonna have zero in the denominator. And you might end up with a zero on top. So this is where I would say, don't use L'Hopital's rule. Let me show you why you shouldn't. It's gonna be the limit as x goes to zero. The derivative of one is zero. The derivative of secant squared x, we have to apply the chain rule. You're gonna have negative. You bring this down, it's going to be 2 secant x multiplied by the derivative of secant x, which is going to be secant x tan x. So that's what you have. And in the denominator, we're going to have sine x, because this is going to be 0 minus negative sine, so it's going to be sine x. Ah, that's crazy. Now, can we plug in zero? Okay, if you plug in zero to here, you're gonna get one, this is one, but this is zero. You plug in x here, this is gonna be zero. So now what you have here is 
2 secant squared tan x over sine x. You have to do L'Hopital's rule one more time, and now you have a product with two chains. Okay, let's clean this up. <laughs> so this is going to be over sine x. Now, watch this. If you continue this sequence of the chain rule, and you keep using L'Hopital's rule, I do not know how many more times you have to differentiate before you can happily say, maybe one more time, maybe you might get an answer. I think one more time, but this is, that's heavy chain rule. I don't want to do that. So what I would rather do is, um, I'm going to take a pause here. And I'm going to go back to even this guy from here, okay? Let's go here and see what we could have done without L'Hopital's rule. What else, what does this look like? This looks very juicy because this is the difference of two squares. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that this is equal to the limit as x goes to 0 of, this is 1 minus secant x times 1 plus secant x. This is 1 minus secant x, 1 plus secant x, divided by 1 minus the cosine of x. So naturally, you would ask yourself, how does this make my life better? It does, because this 1 minus secant x, you can rewrite to give you a 1 minus cosine x that can cancel this guy out. Because remember, the problem we have now is the 0 over 0 problem. Once you rewrite this, watch this. We're going to have 1 minus secant x is equal to 1 minus 1 over cosine x. If you put these two together, you're going to end up with cosine x minus 1 divided by cosine x. So instead of writing 1 minus secant x, this is what you're going to write. Now if you take this and put it back here, this cosine is going to stay down, but what you're going to have on top will be cosine x minus 1. Or you can actually rewrite this right now and write it as 1 minus cosine x, but put a minus sign in the denominator. So right now, this minus sign, if it goes up, we'll flip it back to this, or you leave it this way. So I'm just going to write this version of it. So what you're going to have will be equal to, let's rule this out. So what we're going to have is the limit as x goes to 0 of, on top now, I'm going to have 1 minus cosine x times 1 plus secant x divided by, in the denominator, I'm going to have a minus sign, which I can always move back here, but let's leave it for now, negative cosine x times um, 1 minus cosine x. So as you can see, everything is set. Take this out, take this out. What you have left is, this minus sign can go to the back, negative limit as x goes to 0 of 1 plus secant x divided by cosine x. Okay, everything is continuous at zero. I can plug in zero. One plus one over one. So what we have is negative one plus one over one, which is minus two. So this limit is minus two. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning Stop living. Bye-bye.